Our natural world is the result of three billion years of biological evolution and 10,000 years of mutual adaptation between farmers and the environment. Since ancient times, instinct and necessity have driven them to improve their plants by selecting and multiplying the seeds and characteristics of the very best specimens. 3,000 years ago, the Assyrians were already using cross-pollination to make a new and better date palm variety. In ancient China, land was prepared for seeding with primitive tools that are still being used today. Agricultural biodiversity is the source of all our food, clothing and medicine, and it's being lost at an alarming rate. We must protect it, as future generations will depend upon it for survival in the face of unpredictable changes in the environment and human needs. The humble potato originated here in the Andes several thousand years ago. Some of these local Peruvian varieties flourish in extreme cold, others in heavy rainfall. Some can be stored for up to a year. Some, quite simply, taste the best. In the 19th century, one such variety saved millions of lives by providing genetic resistance to the fungus that triggered the Irish potato famine. Once identified, the vital gene was introduced into the narrow gene base of the imported European potato. But by then, more than one million peasants had died of starvation. Farmers like Carlos Romero Hidalgo, here using techniques dating back to the Incas, are the true creators and guardians of this agrodiversity. Desde pequeño he crecido con mi abuelo, ¿no? entonces él sembraba así diferentes papas y yo te gustaba ¿no? de lo que se llama pirua, lo que tenía, entonces yo ten, formé mi hogar, ¿no? entonces yo tengo ese meta que mi abuelo que sembraba y seguí practicando ¿no? ese, esos trabajos que él hacía, que sembraba. The International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources will protect and support these local farming communities, their native varieties, habitats and traditional knowledge through national programs for conservation and sustainable use. In Peru, one such project for in situ conservation is already up and running under the supervision of Mario Tapia. In estos cinco años del proyecto, nosotros esperamos registrar la biodiversidad, apoyar a las comunidades campesinas así como a nivel nacional revalorar los cultivos nativos, ofrecer posibilidades de una mejor legislación, apoyar el mercado y finalmente organizar un sistema de información sobre los recursos genéticos. This is germplasm, genetic raw material. In this case, rice seeds being prepared for long-term storage at the International Rice Research Center, IRI, in the Philippines. This earthquake-proof and fireproof gene bank is the largest collection of rice in the world. It houses 107,000 seed samples for wild and domestic varieties gathered around the globe over the past 30 years. But for rice plant breeders, it's just the starting point of a long, patient search for key genetic characteristics. I yield disease resistance and of course, uh, other like nutrition, uh, tolerance to tolerance to abiotic stresses like salinity, uh, drought, uh, too much water, and all those sorts. So those are the characteristics that the plant breeder is looking for. Traditional and modern technologies are used to combine the specific genes needed to develop improved, high-yielding rice varieties. If food production in developing countries is to keep up with population growth, it must increase by approximately 60% over the next 25 years. For some countries, the gene bank is also a safe house. A small packet of seeds stored at Erie can give farmers the chance to rebuild their lives. The gene bank has been uh, a very important uh, contributor in bringing back 
the lost materials in countries uh, damaged by war. A very good example is uh, Cambodia. Ex situ collections are of fundamental importance for the free exchange and sustainable use of plant genetic resources. But the interaction and co-adaptation of farmers, their plants, and the land is a continuous process. Out in the fields, farmers still using traditional methods ensure that the evolutionary dynamics of each species are maintained. The main centers of origin of cultivated plants are not evenly distributed around the globe, but concentrated mainly in tropical and subtropical areas. Some of the poorest countries in the world are actually the wealthiest, at least in terms of the agrodiversity vital to the survival of mankind. No country is self-sufficient, and on average, each country depends on others for 70% of genetic resources for the main crops. The Mediterranean region is the center of origin for crops like asparagus and cabbage, but it depends upon other countries for the genetic resources of bean, maize, sunflower, and potato. Thousands of years of selection by nature and farmers have created the genetic diversity that makes this exchange possible. But these farmers have reaped few benefits. Now, for the first time, their immense contribution to agrodiversity in the past, present, and future has been formally recognized. <laughs> and the international treaty stipulates the protection of farmers' rights in three key ways. The fair and equal distribution of benefits deriving from the use of plant genetic resources the protection of traditional knowledge, and the right to participate in decision-making. The International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources is the revision of a previous non-binding undertaking adopted in 1983. Seven years of highly complex negotiations resulted in the treaty's approval at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization Conference in November 2001. This international treaty is a crucial contribution to the construction of a world with more justice, less hunger, and more solidarity with the environment and future generations. The international treaty is truly a global concern. We must ensure the survival of our planet's resources so that they, in turn, can ensure ours.